<laughs> How are we doing? Welcome to my little corner. The other day I realised it's been months since we had like a heart to heart where I just sat and chatted to you. Um, and there's been a lot going on. On? A lot going on. It's hard to do this. I haven't actually done this in a long time. The last couple of videos you saw were filmed ages ago. Like this one, I had to edit this while I was extremely ill and I have clips of myself dying, like actually just on the cusp of death, <laughs> recording voice pickups. Um, so when you're editing together footage, you usually realize there's certain things that you wanted to say to bridge two sections together. And it, there's a lot go that goes into a YouTube edit like that. It actually hurts watching that footage back, knowing how bad I was. I'm filming this for two main reasons. One is to hopefully connect with people who've experienced anything similar. So please share far and wide with anyone you know who's experienced anything I'm about to talk about. Secondly, I'm hoping to inspire some of you to make changes in your life before you crash and burn like I did. And I was warned that this was gonna happen by my therapist a day before it all really kicked off. I just wanna get comfy. But I was on a video call with my therapist, just talking about parenting stuff. We've been going through a lot. We have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. The three-year-old is going through poop withholding. So he's like really afraid of the toilet all of a sudden after being toilet trained for a long time because he had a painful poo at Christmas from all the Christmassy food. And it's been three months of him screaming, panicking anytime he has to do a poo and it just can take up our entire day. And so anyway, I was having one of those days. I was having a big parenting day. We were chatting away. Um, but I had a big breakdown on the call because I was just really run down from constantly being the primary caregiver for two kids, constantly working every second that my husband was off work. So us never seeing each other, us never having a day in the diary where it's like, oh, we don't have to do anything that day. Um, or even just a day to just do admin life stuff, you know? And my immune system was on the floor because my son is in preschool, he's been bringing back every illness going. While I wasn't getting really ill constantly, it was more so just the relentlessness of not being well, like being a bit sick, at the same time having to care for two sick children because everything he brings home, the baby will get and you know, then she's wanting to breastfeed a lot more. So it's it, it's been a really difficult start to the year for us, like just a washout, just like in the bin. Recently, I've been really struggling with the conflict that a lot of women feel these days between family and career. You know, do I hire a nanny so I can focus more on my career? Last year, I cracked Instagram reels and they were getting millions of views and it would have been the time to like really go strong at that, you know? And my YouTube views recently have like picked up and I've got all these different ideas of things I want to do, more books I want to write. Like I'm a very driven, ambitious person with a lot of creativity and a lot of like things I want to do in my life. But then my children matter so much to me and I don't want to miss their early years by being so focused on work and so tired after work. I wanna keep being as involved as I am and you know, doing everything for them. And um, I can't do it all. And I've seen a lot of people speaking about this recently, like Lily Allen. Uh, but yes, my children ruined my career. <laughs> <laughs> Lily. It really annoys me when people say you can have it all because quite frankly, you can't. You and can't. you know, some people choose their career over their children and that's their prerogative. But you know, my parents were quite absent when I was a kid. And I feel like that really left some like nasty scars that I'm not willing to, you know, to repeat it's online. Really and so I chose stepping back and concentrating on them. And I'm glad that I've done that. So I've, I've been talking to my therapist a lot about that kind of thing. So this is where I was at when she and I had the conversation where she said, if something in your life does not change soon, you either get a nanny, you free up time somehow, or you stop working so much, you are going to crash. 
so hard physically and mentally you're going to be just in a really bad way and I can see it coming in you like she she knew by the way I was on the call the following week so much happened within that week which we're going to get into that on the call she started the call by saying I was on holiday in Prague I have so many patients but you kept coming into my mind how are you I was so worried about you um like she has been in a similar place herself in her life and I was like well everything you said has come to be and I have crashed and I am dying I missed a call with her while I was in hospital and when I had my last call there with her the other day she was just like oh like she just she's like my safe place I can go and just all the kind of stuff I would never say on here I, would, I don't want to have to say it to my husband put more stuff on his shoulders you know um and she is a better help therapist and better help are and have been a sponsor of mine although I actually pay through my own personal bank account for their services and I've used them since the pandemic yeah if you have any questions about better help at all ask them down below. I'll reply to any BetterHelp questions I get in the comments, but they're a therapy service that's completely online. So they're, you know, through your laptop, through your phone. So it's just really convenient and you can tap into a massive network of therapists. They have about 30,000, literally someone for everyone. They all specialize in so many different things. No matter what you're looking for help with, they'll be able to match you with someone who is right for you. And they do that by asking you a bunch of questions when you go on to their website. I have a link down below, which has 10% off your first month as well. Um, but you go on and you answer some questions and then they learn your preferences. Um, like, you know, when I, when I missed that call, because I was in hospital, I had messages from my therapist there when I clicked back in. Um, and being able to message is just so amazing. Any in-person therapist I ever had, if I called them or like texted them, <laughs> they'd be like, what are you doing? So it's just brilliant to have that access. And yeah, the weekly calls are just so important for me right now. So if you want professionalism, if you want someone custom picked and more flexibility with your scheduling, do check out my link down below. I'm so happy to have been working with BetterHelp. That's better help H-E-L-P, by the way. Um, because yeah, I only promote things that I actually use. And that woman with BetterHelp who's dealing with me right now, God love her, <laughs> because I've been a lot lately. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks to them. So we begin with a bit of background. Last year, for most of the year, I was experiencing a bit of a weird kind of tingling feeling all over my body that would come and go. It was quite mild, you know, it was just a little bit distracting. In no way was it debilitating. I could ignore it. It was just annoying and concerning. I was like, what is that? That's not normal. It would come with these enormous waves of fatigue. And I also started experiencing, as the year went on, a lot more kind of insomnia, issues falling asleep, having to wake up a lot to pee, even though I was breastfeeding less. So like I was waking up, drinking a lot of water, peeing all the time. Um, so yeah, I went and I paid for an, a ridiculously expensive set of blood tests from Bloodworks, which is a company you can just go in and like ask for a package or ask for a specific blood test and they'll do it um, right there and then. This was like really comprehensive. I'll put it on screen here and um, yeah, so it went into a, a lot. It was an overall kind of health check. And a couple of things did stand out on the blood test, like I had low blood sugar. Um, remember that for later. Let's move on to my first symptom with this health scare, which was a couple of weeks long. I was making a sandwich and blood started pooling in one of my fingers. There was an area of my vein that just went really blue kind of purple, started swelling, it was sore. Um, I had to kind of press on it and massage it to like get it to pass. And it really freaked me out. So much so that I went to the doctor. I'm not the type of person to just like go to the doctor all the time, but I went to my GP over this because I thought I have a blood clot and there's bits of the blood clot breaking off and traveling around my body. He looked at it and he said, you've just pinched a vein. Um, 
So that was that. I didn't leave feeling very confident and I had massive anxiety. Like that, it caused a massive panic attack when that happened. Um, so I was in a really heightened state of anxiety. Then I remember I just started like aching all over and just feeling rotten. But then a few days later, it happened again, not even a different finger, a different hand. <laughs> and it happened on my arm. And like when I pressed in on it, it left like a little bruise and then it moved. And then I pressed in on that and that left a little bruise. And so yeah, I was getting these like lumps traveling through my bloodstream. Really freaked me out. I started getting them in my upper arms, some in my legs, and the area would go warm and I'd try and rub it away and then it would leave a bruise and uh, eat really weird stuff. I'd be in bed and my hands would, I'd wake up and my hands would be dead, like, you know, full on pins and needles. Just felt like my circulation was being affected really bad by something. My, you know, my arms were going different colors and stuff. Um, bit more tingling than normal as well. Then I got a load of flu symptoms. So just your typical virus symptoms, fever, snotty, coughing, all that stuff, like nose swollen shut, couldn't sleep because I couldn't breathe. That, the normal crappy virus stuff. Took a test for COVID because I had the same weird COVID symptom that I had the first time I got COVID, which was really bad lower back pain. And it, my test was positive. So I had COVID and it was just a bad dose. And I think it hit me so bad because I was just so run down when I got it. Another thing from my blood test actually was that my vitamin D was like on the cusp of like almost low. And they say that like when you have low vitamin D, you can have a worse time with COVID. And I had stopped taking supplements a while back. I've just been forgetting to take them. So I got really sick, couldn't sleep, but like I was getting through it. My symptoms were improving. I was coughing up green stuff. So my doctor prescribed an antibiotic kind of just in case. Um, I took that and I don't know was the antibiotic and this next symptom like coincidental that they happened at the same time or were they linked? I have no idea, but I did stop the antibiotic after two days with my doctor's approval because I was lying in bed, this is about six days into COVID and it felt like someone pressed a button and I was just being electrocuted with electricity going through my arms, my hands, my legs, my feet, my head, my face. It would be randomly burning, randomly stinging, randomly just a little triangular patch of skin. And um, it, it was so strange and unbearable. Like if I touched my own arm, it was worse. If the blanket touched off me, it was way worse. If I my face touched into the pillow, that whole part of my head would be just, I say pain, but it was like more just like fire or like, it's really hard to explain um, the feeling that I was having. And that feeling is associated with a lot of horrible health conditions. And it's something I never experienced anything like that in my life. And it was it so bad that like I couldn't focus on or enjoy any moment, couldn't focus on and enjoy my children constantly was on the edge of crying or like wanting to scream or wanting to, to rip my I just wanted to get out of my skin I didn't want, want to be in my body I couldn't tolerate life like that I had horrible intrusive thoughts that were quite dark um because I was th were wondering am I going to feel like this forever you know and I of course was googling like these symptoms related to COVID and a lot of other people who've had COVID have had this. Two days and nights went by where I was in that state where I was sure I was dying. Like I was sure that I was like, because it was also these little clot things and I was just certain that something was wrong. Like my body was attacking itself or I was gonna have a stroke. Like I thought at one point I was having a stroke it's just little things were happening with my face where I couldn't, you know, I couldn't feel up here. It was like completely numb. 
I was having heart palpitations. Even thinking about it is just... Ugh. While this was happening, my body was just repelling food. If I tried to chew, I tried to chew a piece of toast one night and I, it turned completely dry in my mouth. And my mouth, I couldn't swallow it. My mouth was completely dry as well the whole time all this was happening. And I was worried that I got COVID and it like it like activated something that was already there or it worsened something that was already there because I'd had a little bit of tingling before. My health anxiety brain went straight to, you know, MS, multiple sclerosis. I wrote about MS in one of my books. It's very scary. And I'm in a state, you know, I'm still trying to breastfeed my baby and I went to A&E, I went to the hospital. Because I had COVID, they put me in an isolation room and they let my baby stay with me, thankfully. This was in the Matter Hospital in Dublin. They were incredible. I had a medical team and I had a psychiatrist spend a lot of time with me. The psychiatrist's assessment of me was that I wasn't depressed, but I was extremely burned out and very, very anxious. So he suggested medication for that, which I just wasn't keen on. I was too concerned with the physical stuff going on. But he explained that poor mental health makes how we experience pain even worse. So he said addressing that is really important regardless, um, which is true. The medical doctors on the, the blood stuff thought it was superficial thrombophlebitis. And I was like, and they said, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. If you get signs of DVT, which is deep vein thrombosis, like a big blood clot, come back in. And I'm I was like, okay. So obviously me being me, I get home and I Google <laughs> superficial thrombophlebitis and the words blood clot are just coming up. You know, that these are, it's it's caused by a blood clot. And like, I couldn't read past that. I just saw that the anxiety went through the roof. They had said about the tingling stuff that it can happen after a bad virus and it should go away, but it was just getting worse. I had more days and nights without sleep and without food. And it was, the worst, I think, what by far the worst week of my life, by far, by far, because there's children involved in this, and it was terrifying, and I went to A&E again, I was like an animal, writhing in pain, um, they kept me in, they gave me some codeine, they said it might help me to sleep, and they were keeping an eye on my blood pressure and stuff, because I couldn't bring my baby, I was like hand expressing my breast milk into little cups, and I had to dump it because I was being given codeine, uh, so she wouldn't have been able to drink it anyway. They were doing a lot of physical exams, um, checking for stuff like MS, and like, that even being mentioned by a medical doctor, is very scary. They said they didn't think that they'd need to do a lumbar puncture, but like even it just being mentioned is just was just too much for me. And um, yeah, I was still really anxious. So the medical doctor, he said, I need to see a neurologist, but A and E is not the place for like diagnosing what was wrong with me because I, you know, I wasn't about to die. Their best guess was that it was peripheral neuropathy, neuropathy, um, which apparently can have like a million different causes. So it wasn't very helpful. Uh, they did like, you know, chest x-ray and all that kind of stuff and said, you're, you're all right. Like, um, but he did prescribe me pregabalin for nerve pain and for anxiety. And I did decide to go on that medication. Um, because the nerve pain was just ju insane. I got home with the prescription and the anxiety was terrible. The lack of sleep, like every time I tried to fall asleep, it's like my body just rebooted. I'd be almost asleep and my whole body would go Duh -duh -duh -duh, with like adrenaline or something. I just, my body would not let me sleep. I've never been so sleep deprived in my entire life. And yeah, couldn't eat at all. Like I think I'd lost 10 pounds by this stage. Um, my clothes were just fallen off me. So then the next day I started the pregabalin and this did make me very tired initially but the nerve pain eased up. Literally I went on it and um, there was like negative headlines in the news and I was like oh no but that's that's it being used as a street drug that's not like when it's being monitored by a doctor who's prescribing it and in like small doses. Over the next few days things got much better. I started doing 
um, breath work and meditations on YouTube. Like I'd look up little meditation videos, guided meditations and um, box breathing, which my therapist recommended I do. And Thomas was an angel and he's my angel. Like he moved his holidays around. So he was able to take some time off to like, you know, help me, but also like hold the entire family up while I was just, I, the, the, the exhaustion and the, I was just like, a, not functioning. Like I was dead. Like I couldn't do anything. Um, and he was, you know, giving me massages and making me cups of tea and uh, roasting parsnip and, or, and carrots and sweet potatoes for me to eat. Those few days were really good. We binge watched one day while kids were napping and in the evenings. I was eating really simple things, like anything I could stomach was like one ingredient, you know, egg, <laughs> nuts, <laughs> meat, fruit, like nothing, nothing mad at all. And I was having no caffeine and the medication and stuff. So then I started finally being able to get a bit of sleep. So that little bit of sleep I had for a couple of days, like really helped me to not feel like I was going to die. And we were managing and I figured like, oh, I'm getting better. Everything's fine now. And then one day I had a bunch of like cheesy pasta and bread and just kind of like, I, I overexerted myself a bit. Like I did loads of cleaning and I did a long walk. And I'm, I remember that night, the tingling and the burning and it all started coming back again when the blanket would touch me, again when anyone would touch me and the baby, every time she, the baby touched me, it was so bad, like, and I start, my anxiety just went, un, like, I, I couldn't breathe. I was so in a state, because I was like, I'm on medication, like, why am I still feeling all this? Um, turns out it takes a while for pregabalin to fully kick in, like a couple of weeks, and I'm on a very low dose of it as well. And I was getting really strange feelings as well in my head and like these little strips of it. It was really bad in the back of my scalp, like the this, this burning, stinging pain. And then I was like, do I suddenly have some autoimmune thing? And because I'm not celiac, I've I tested twice this year. I'm not, I don't have celiac and um, I love gluten. So then, yeah, I was like, right, I'm just gonna stick again to like the one ingredient things and try keep the stress down, which we'd been doing really well. We were like, try, like everything has to be really calm. Everything has to be like moment by moment and calm and nice tea and calm and music. And yeah, so we had another good couple of days where it started to slowly go away. Then something very stressful happened with my son, my three-year-old. And again, it all like flared up again. Like, I, and I say flare up, that's what it felt like. It's like everything was like this and then it all went. I went to the hospital again. And I never, I'm so not this type of person to do this. Like I don't think I've ever spent so much time in hospital leaving my baby who I exclusively breastfeed is very, very, like it's a massive deal to me. I usually always have her nearby. This time it was, the reason I was going in was mostly the veins thing got so bad along with the tingles. I was getting these big cluster clumps in my arms, in my legs, where I would press a point, like press in, and the, the pain was like searing pain. And it would be just a little tiny, tiny little area. And no one could tell me, is that in my vein? Is that in my muscle? Is that in the tissues? Like, what is that? Where is it? Why is that? <laughs> Why? No one could explain anything in the A&E. They did a D-dimer blood test to rule out a blood clot and that came back fine. My D-dimer levels were normal. The doctor was just basically like, these things do happen. These things do happen. These things do happen. Ma he said, hopefully it should just go away itself. And I hate not having answers, but the doctor said it himself. They're in the business of treating symptoms. Way less focus on finding out the cause and addressing the cause, because there can be so many causes and it's all so complex. Everything in our lifestyle is so intricately linked. A&E is there for if your kid falls and smashes their head open or whatever, you know, it's it, not for anything that's like 
seems like it could be chronic or whatever. So anyway, I got home and yeah, waiting on a neurologist. But here's the weird part, right? Since getting home from hospital, that was about a week ago, it's probably a combination of these things, like, you know, time, but also the pregabalin has fully kicked in now. That can take a couple of weeks to actually work properly. And thirdly, I've made massive changes to my lifestyle um, that I've just never done before, mainly food-wise. And I now feel better than I did before I got COVID <laughs> right now because I can't feel the nerve pain. I don't know, is that the medication? Is that the lifestyle changes? Is it both? I don't know. Um, I have a lot more mental clarity right now than normal. I'm sleeping better than I have in years. I just wanna mention where I'm at now, right? So I'm considering finding a functional medicine doctor and looking into like less Western medicine type stuff and any, any, suggestions please comment them any recommendations you know I've never tried acupuncture I've never tried like an osteopath there's so many things that are like outside of the typical go to your GP and take this antibiotic or whatever so many things I've never looked into or tried or given the time of day to but I am open to anything like I don't know what was wrong with me or what is wrong with me like the way they had mentioned post-viral syndrome I don't know what is it that I don't know do I have nerve damage which the second time I was in hospital he had mentioned peripheral neuropathy as the you know behind the nerve pain but then you google that and there's like so many kinds of neuro neuropathy or neuropathy I don't know how you say it but neuropathy so many things behind that even anxiety itself uh, diabetes like so many things. I don't know if that's gone because I'm on medication now. I don't know, is it there, but I just can't feel it. I don't know what was going on with my blood. That has been not explained at all. I'm just editing the video in the middle of like a flare up based on what the flare ups are like on the medication. And yes, it is still there. Um, It feels like my blood is fizz. I've got like just fizz going through my legs and my arms. It's not like the same pain as when I'm not on the medication, but it doesn't get rid of like the sensation of like, it's like stuff crawling in me or on me. And then also I'm getting itching now. Itching is a new symptom, itching all over. But I'm um, feeling amazing because of the lifestyle changes, despite the fact that there's something there underlying that I need to find out what it is. I don't know if the blood stuff and the nerve stuff were very connected to each other. I don't know, was all that a coincidence and COVID just happened at the same time or was all this related to COVID? I don't have any answers and I hate that. And all I know is that with the results of the changes I've made, I have theories, okay? I have theories, <laughs> bitch. And I know that the way I'm living right now is like, it has to it has to go on, it has to continue. I cannot go back from this. The things that I've been doing, I cannot. Because life without health is scary. And this has opened my eyes to what so many people deal with ongoing. Like people who live with chronic pain and pain that comes and goes and comes and goes. The thought of having to have that fucking feeling forever and just never knowing am I going to wake up and it's going to be there horrendous I'm I've been reading so much into the control and the power we do have over our bodies and I'm done with not prioritizing my body I can't look after my kids properly if my body is not working <laughs> my brain is not working couple of theories right my vitamin d not being that high you know being kind of on the edge going into covid Vitamin D is vital for nerve connections to the brain and for immune system function. So like, I feel like that must have played a part in things and I just wonder how related that has been to like how I was feeling over the past year. Because I also wear sunscreen and I cover up a lot outside so I don't get much vitamin D from the sun. It definitely feels like some crazy immune response. Also, anxiety and stress can cause neuropathy. 
um, neuropathy, but anxiety can't actually damage your nerves. And I don't know, do I have nerve damage? But anxiety can cause symptoms and sensations like burning, tingling, numbness, skin crawling, and even pain. Anxiety is no joke. But yeah, something that came up when I talked about this on Instagram, something that came up with a lot of followers, including doctors, in my DMs was the topic of insulin resistance and just like diabetes and stuff. And like my dad has type 2 diabetes. And also, before I go on, a lot of you were telling me about COVID triggering different autoimmune problems in people and mast cell activation and like fibromyalgia. I have fibromyalgia on both sides of my family. So I'm, I'm open to all of that. I am. I, I know how long these things take to like get sorted and diagnosed and everything like that. But I am also open to the fact that I have some power here because I have to believe that. I have to believe that or it will go mad. Anyway, insulin resistance. Yeah, I was coming up. And I do think that there was some kind of sugar imbalance, something going on with my insulin based on changes I've made to my diet and what's happened to my body. I did have a lot of symptoms of insulin resistance, increased thirst, the increased urinating. I would be peeing all day, all night, um, feeling tired after eating, having fatigue relieved by eating, being irritable, sleeping poorly, craving carbs and sugar. Oh my God. <laughs> I was eating so much chocolate, like so much. And just because it was dark, I'd be like, it's okay. But like, so much carbs and sh sugar. And the more sugar you eat, the more insulin you need. A lot of people have an exaggerated insulin response because of how many carbs they eat and like how often they eat as well. It's like every time you eat, your body's kind of having to go, All right, here we go again. When your pancreas sh shoots out a lot of insulin, you can end up with something called hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. And I had low blood sugar in my blood test. For an example, if you have hypoglycemia, your blood flow can be impacted. You can develop neuropathy, like the tingling pains. Being unwell can cause what's known as a hypo. The symptoms of a hypo I had while this whole time that I was sick, like I was sh shaking, I looked really unwell, I was really anxious and I'd be hungry, but I, I just couldn't eat because I was so sick and I was sweating. And those blood tests were only done shortly before all this kicked off. I didn't get to go to my GP and go through my bloods because with blood works, while they give you the blood results, you're supposed to then follow up with a GP. So I don't know, was there actually something there that could explain a lot of the tingling stuff. Not saying I have that, but it's it's just a theory. I just think something was up with my blood sugar because since I've changed my diet to basically one ingredient foods, I'm having, you know, I'll have like a few eggs and an avocado for my breakfast. I'll have, please don't hate me if you're vegan, but like just a bunch of chicken thighs, bit of paprika on top. A while later, I might have a big pile of cooked vegetables um, and some nut butter or just some nuts. And the only dairy I've really been having is like kefir. I've been having olives, um, just like anything that is not ultra processed. When I do have oats, like porridge oats or whatever, I'm just like cooking them in water and putting in a nut butter or some seeds or something. The things I've been eating are really satiating. I'm also not constantly grazing, which is a habit I got into. Like I'd be having a couple of bits of chocolate here, a couple of bits of chocolate there, you know, a little bit of a biscuit, but like a lot of fat and protein basically, and less, less carbs. And I've never had such stable, like no crashes all day. I like, I was constantly having like, oh, crash, oh, crash, oh, crash, with, with like sugar and, and carbs. Yeah, just like very stable energy, um, waking up much easier. Like when I'm woken in the morning, I'm not like lying there like this. Like I can actually just immediately wake up. And at night I go, I fall asleep so easy. I don't wake up all night. I don't have to get up and go to the toilet and drink water all night. Most of the HelloFresh meals we pick are perfect for this way of eating as well. Like the odd one might have like a sachet with some, like lots of different spices and stuff. And sometimes the sachet will have sugar or something like that and um, then Thomas will have those those ones but like I can customize those meals 
so like we've not even had to change that much at all everything's very plain but oh my god do I feel amazing for it like way less muscle aches and um my mental health is definitely better I'm now I am on that pre-gabalin for the anxiety but like I can't explain it, there's just something. Like I even notice when I'm walking by the mirror that there's like more colour in my face than like I usually look a bit grey and dead without makeup on. You know, but now I'm having kind of like three meals, sometimes four a day, and I'm having bigger gaps between when I am and am not eating. So like kind of intermittent fasting type thing. Um, I read, I've read a lot about autophagy. I've read a lot about ultra processed food I've watched so many incredible people talk about this on YouTube there's just so much information coming out about how actually how our food is processed changed and messed with and stuff like that that has an enormous impact on our microbiome um so yeah I'm just I'm like not eating ingredients that I don't recognize and you'd think this would be very triggering for me because I have a history with orthorexia, but it just, it isn't at all. I do not want to experience horrific, agonizing, burning pain all over my body. But I also just want to like feel really good. And I do, I feel really good. So if you'd like more on that, you know, like a video just showing kind of what I'm eating and stuff like that, I could, I could make that and talk more about this and um, talk, maybe make one of those sit down like hyper edited videos about ultra processed food. If you want that, like this video, comment. But um, some other things I'm doing that are making me feel really good right now. And this is a big one. I touched on it at the start, but um, I've been stepping back from, from working or feeling the need to post all the time on social media to free up some family time um some relaxation time <laughs> what is that <laughs> like and my therapist has been key with this you know throughout my 20s my career was my identity i, I had such an amazing fun career i had the most mind-blowing 20s if you've been following me for a long time you'll you'll know how many class opportunities I've had and how many cool places I got to go and how many pe cool people I got to meet and um, it was it was amazing and so my job was my identity but now I have kids and those kids like being their mother is is most of who I am now that is my new identity and that means that most of me I don't put online because I don't want to share my children's entire lives, you know, but it, it's very hard when most, like 99% of the time I'm caring for them, I'm cleaning, I'm cooking, I'm just homemaking, but yeah, working like every second that I could when I wasn't doing those things was just burning me out so bad. You know, so bad because I had this pressure on myself that I have to upload X amount of YouTube videos. I have to be really active on Instagram all the time. And my husband in between all this is flying all around the world and we're just trying to keep everything going. We're renovating our entire house, which you saw in our, my last video. It's too much. And it, yeah, it's, it's too much. However, I'm not ready to like fully step back, like take a career break. I don't want to do that. I love... I love my my job and I love making stuff so I'm I'm kind of like leaning toward just better quality but less often possibly creating a parenting substack look into substack if you're interested in that um and just not ever doing work in the evenings in my little hour that I get with my husband at night after the kids go to bed that is that has to be sacred we need that to unwind I need that to just <sighs> caffeine I'm still avoiding caffeine which is weird I'm not getting any caffeine headaches um I really miss coffee so I might start like having some some decaf coffee and then maybe having like one coffee in the mornings but someone said it really well like they said caffeine is borrowed energy and I suppose like if I'm not going and doing like a workout immediately I don't know that caffeine would help my anxiety levels so um yeah I kind of I've, I've I've enjoyed not feeling anxious with this pregabalin it's it's really good for anxiety in my experience so far and um, but there's a lot of different negative experiences with pregabalin guided guided meditations on youtube this guy this guy see this guy <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. He, his voice is so lovely. Every single time I've listened to one of his guided meditations, mainly like the couple of weeks I was really sick, that's the only way I was able to actually like fall asleep. Even if I was getting like an hour of sleep, it was because of him. But yeah, he, he has a, a beautiful way of doing guided meditations. It's just lo like these healing ones where you're like visualizing this healing light going through all of the different parts of your body. And it's just lovely. I don't know, they just hypnotized me and definitely made me feel a bit more in control when I was like spiraling out of control. I used to use the Calm app, but I stopped paying for it. I might get that again. But if you've any recommendations as well for like apps, any any meditation ones, please share them with me. Next is huge um, breath work. I've been doing a lot of breath work and I've started doing cold showers. Um, Wim Hof, my friends, we're getting into the Wim Hof. Just take the damn cold shower. I'm sorry, damn cold shower. It's a heavenly cold shower. It's amazing, it's amazing. Behave as if you are in the summer. Think about that. That is the power of your mind, being able to switch your body into a powerful being. Planning on going for a cold dip in the ocean on Sunday. Uh, I tried to like get into all this stuff back in, remember my Project Reset series in 2021? And um, yeah, I, I really wanted this, I wanted to be that person who like, always does the cold showers and get the cold plunge ice baths and I never really it just never stuck because I found it really hard it's really really hard but there are so many insane benefits to the way the way we breathe when we're cold you know we're human beings and we wear clothes and we live in houses now but we're not wired to like our bodies haven't suddenly just changed. They're, the, the way that our bodies work, people are still constantly trying to understand it, but we would naturally be outside so much and in freezing temperatures and in cold temperatures so much and in cold, washing in cold water. There didn't used to be stuff to like, you know, just heat up a bath or a shower. Like you'd be washing in, in cold ass water and do like, and, and that breathing the amount of oxygen that pumps into your body and the, how that affects all of your cells. And when you're in cold water, all the little muscles all throughout your body and your whole, all your blood flow and everything is so affected. When you're doing the breathing and the cold showers and stuff like that, your heart rate is lower, you've, you're not stressed. People have recovered from all kinds of illnesses doing this stuff. It's so fascinating. Like if you read into Wim Hof and but he didn't come up with this. This is like like you know this kind of real deep breathing has been around forever. He he just kind of came up with a way to simulate the way your body would react to like the cold with with breath work. Um, so I've been doing rounds of his breath work in the mornings and they are amazing for energy. Oh my god, unbelievable impact on me. I don't know what it is. Even like. You know, you do these rounds of breaths and then you're able to hold your breath for like a minute. You know, I've been doing that kind of stuff. I've been doing box breathing if I need to calm down from stress. I've been doing really deep, like lovely breath work sessions from YouTube at, at nighttime. I'm learning so much about how we just don't breathe properly nowadays. Like there's a thing called tech apnea where you're, you're on social media and you stop breathing. You know, if you're looking at something and you're, you know, you're really interested in or you're, it's just such an overwhelm that we're kind of holding our breath a lot. And, um, you know, with stress and anxiety anyway, like we don't breathe properly, but just being online and at computers, we, we're not breathing enough and properly. And um, it's affecting our health massively. And another one is yoga. I started uh, yoga with Adrienne. It's a 30 day yoga challenge thing. Everyone knows about this. It's been online for years, but um, she is so just delicious. Like she's just, and I don't mean like I really fancy her, like I do a bit, but like, she, she, not that she's just beautiful, but it's just her energy is so lovely. And just doing the odd one of them um, has just, it. it's, yoga is just class like it's just class it's so class that even my three-year-old loves doing yoga now youtube has all these 
yoga for kids videos, dinosaur yoga and stuff. And he'll actually ask to do yoga and he wants to do it by himself. And he's just so engaged and into it and he's really good at it. So I just love that. Like we've started just our whole lifestyle and our whole like way we're going about life as a family is just different now because of this happening. And it was almost like just the best thing that could have happened. It's like I needed it to happen, which is so weird to say. And on that, like another big one is Thomas and I have realized like we have such high expectations of our son because he's quite intelligent. Like you, you'd almost forget that he's just three. And then when he does things that a three-year-old would do, I'm just like so angry. And I need to like stop that, you know, like he's a child. We need to keep our stress as a family absolutely minimal. Everyone is happier when the stress is low and you know if he does some thing that a kid does I'm just trying to let it like wash over me like water and just fall off me and you know obviously still follow up with you know my any kind of discipline or um being consistent with like boundaries withholding boundaries all that but um definitely trying to let go of of the expectations for him to be like a six-year-old when he is three. On exercise, you know, considering all these things, you'd probably think I'm gonna say something mad about exercise, but like, actually, no. Like, seriously pacing myself when it comes to exercise because I've learned the hard way. I walked my son to school a couple of times and had to stop multiple times to just like catch my breath and stuff. Um, Even though it was only like, it's only a 10 minute walk, like, you. I, Right before I got COVID, I was like powering and I, you know, um, exercise wise, but whatever has happened to my body recently, like my body has, my body is traumatized and um, I'm having almost like what people with long COVID experience where with exercise, like I have to, if I clean one room, I have to rest for a while. And I, I'm just, I'm just accepting that I'm not at my full capacity right now and that's okay. It's really hard to accept that because I'm 34. Like I don't like feeling like a sick person or acting like a sick person, but um, you can't heal if you just go back full hog at everything, you know? Healing is good, rest is good. It's like when you think about building muscle, like, and you think, oh, I'm going to the gym and I'm building muscles right now. And like, when you're in the gym, you're just tearing your muscles. They are actually built when you're sleeping and resting and having a rest day. Then there is just general like self-care stuff, kind of things that I was always trying to do, you know, maybe once a week, once every two weeks where I'd get half an hour to have a bath. Um, trying to increase that kind of stuff because I'm working less now. There's a lot more cuddling happening with the husband. <laughs> what kind of a wink was that? Yeah, there's just more of that kind of thing, you know. Time for relaxing massages. He's giving me, you know, neck rubs and feet rubs and, um, you know, having baths with magnesium salts and just like, I'm just trying to live the, the stay at home mother life a bit more and work a bit less. Um, very needed, very nice, very nice to um, to not be fully, fully, constantly, only just have to work any time I get a minute. So uh, that's nice. And just, yeah, watching stuff in the evenings with no thought of like social media or my laptop. Like I'm barely out. That's the other one. Screen time. My screen time, my average daily screen time has come down to like between one and two hours and that's including like playing stuff in the background and all that like it's way way less that well it's not on days I have to edit a YouTube video but because my laptop then I'm editing at the screen but I just mean time online or googling stuff script like googling symptoms scrolling on on Instagram like I, I go on now with a set intention to like look at certain people's profiles who I really I'm interested in instead of just like aimless you know um and it is just unbelievable how much mental space that frees up not even how much time it frees up 
how much mental space it has freed up for me to just like wander in my mind, like thinking about different stories I want to write, thinking about the holiday we're going on soon as a family and daydreaming about that and visualizing different things I want to do with the kids when they're older or just like thinking about different memories from the past. I'm spending so much more time with myself in my head and I'm much more present with the people in my life. I'm just so much happier and it's it's weird because you know my job is online and I love online media. I, I make online media but there's just there's a time and a place and it's very easy for this stuff to take over such a huge portion of our lives. I do think the internet is like slowly encroaching on everything and it's like become this extra arm of who we are. Like there's online us and then there's like the real world. And for me, for a long time, those two things were just too blurry and I, but I don't want to leave them, you know, I don't want to like leave the internet, but just massively minimizing it has just been really important for me. And um, getting asleep is so much easier when you're, you're not kind of, your brain isn't filled with about a thousand different faces that you've seen within the last hour. Like in, in, in nature, you would only ever see probably a hundred different people's faces in your entire life. But nowadays, like, there's just too much. It's too much. And um, I need one day to go through. I need to, like, go onto Instagram and go into the people I follow and just unfollow. Like, I want to be following, like, 50 people because there's only about 50 accounts that I'm, like, actually really interested in, in keeping up with constantly. And then if I'm interested enough, I will search the person out. I don't need to just have, go on and just be wading through so much stuff to find the things I'm really interested in, you know? Um, this whole experience has been such a wake-up call. I don't think I've ever been so sick um, as an adult, anyway. Definitely not. Apart from, like, you know, the week after I had my son and I had had a big hemorrhage and a, and a bad tear down there and stuff. I needed to be nursed back to health after that but I knew what was causing it and I I didn't have symptoms that were like making me think I'm gonna have some horrible lifelong illness and now the thing is I don't know that I'm fine and and that is a bit scary but I'm just putting that out of my mind because I'm telling myself I'm telling myself even if it's not true that I'm I'm in control here I have power like the medication I'm on isn't masking anything and when I come off the medication the nerve pain will be gone because all these other things I'm doing will have brought down inflammation and will have you know like all of my microbiome will be okay and all my cells will be okay and I I and I don't have some kind of horrible damage from from COVID and I I have to think that way like a, your positive mind frame and mindset is just huge when it comes to your your experience of life and and your mental health um i'm i find it really easy to go into like a downward spiral of negativity and just um catastrophizing and thinking this way is just like vital i i have to think this way for for the for the benefit of my children to be the kind of mother that I want to be for them and to be able to show up and like be fun and be and not be like really tense like my son knows immediately if something's wrong and you know I told you that before and um during all this he'd keep asking me if I was okay and asking me what's up and I don't want that like I just don't want that and I I don't want to just accept you know, if I'm, even if I'm ever told you have this, you have, if, if, if I have had cancer, I would never just go, okay, I'm just going to just not look into how to impact my health at all. Like there's so many things we can do to impact our health and not that like that's going to just cure anything or make anything just vanish because that's obviously not how bodies work, but um, giving your body the best environment, like turning your body into the best environment possible for healing to take place is, is within our power. And, and I do want to keep learning. I want to keep 
educating myself. I I want to keep being gentle with myself and with the fact that I can't be perfect. Like, you know, I've been eating meat. I've been eating fish. I've so many times said, like, I want to be at least vegetarian if I can't be vegan. Like, and then, and yet, um, like, I feel healthier when I have those things and then like I'm feeling like oh I'm 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 not enough and I'm not good enough and I I should be doing more like I have I'm I'm getting rid of all of that like negative self-talk and pressure because right now I can't handle it I reached my breaking point I cracked it was on the floor of a hospital literally on the floor (laughs) screaming crying and like it was a low a really low low and I'm sharing that with you right now because for 10 years I've been a professional oversharer and and I like to tell stories and this is the story of the past month of my life so um if you have anything to say to me about anything from this video, please say it in the comments. I will chat to as many of you as I can. I have some really cool videos in the works based on what has been doing well on my channel recently and I want to know what you want more of. I want to know what you would like from a substack from me because that is going to happen. I'm going to have a substack where I'll be sharing stuff that I don't share anywhere else for, you know, the hard cores, the people who've been with me, you know, for a long time and who just like really care and are really invested. You lot mean so much to me. You're, you're why I can do this kind of stuff for my job so thank you and and um hopefully I'm all right now hopefully it doesn't all flare up again I'll keep you updated on Instagram I'm gonna keep doing everything I can to become the healthiest version of myself ever my goal for when I'm 40 is to be healthier than when I was 30 I mean it I'm I'm kind of done. I'm just done. I'm at that point now where, you know, I'm not young anymore. Like I know I know I'm not old, but I'm not getting younger. I don't want to be 55 with a big long list of medications and health conditions. Just thinking, oh, why didn't I just turn things around then when that big red flag was waving? You know, the red flag being this whole breakdown of of my mental and physical health um so yeah this is the end my lovely friend the end the end